Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at prototyping with the Atmega 2560. And if you've built any projects using the Atmega 2560, probably using this board here, very common. This is a chip here, it's the Atmega 2560 chip. It basically has the same core as the Atmega 328P microcontroller, which is on the Nano, but it has more flash, more RAM, more UARTs, SPI, I2C. So it's basically an Atmega 320P microcontroller with a lot more stuff. For bigger projects. Now the prototype with this board, we have we have headers around the perimeter of the board, female headers. So we could take our breadboard and we could put it beside there and then we could just put the wires inside the headers. Now we could we could do our circuitry on the breadboard. That's one way of prototyping. Or another way, you could actually get a shield for this board. Looks like this. So on the shield we have the same headers. We have a reset push button switch, we have power LED, we have the programming port, the ICSP. So you can just plug that into uh, that Mega uh, 2560 board and we have uh, prototyping on top. Now there's another board that's similar to this board but it's a lot smaller. There's this one here. It's that Mega 2560 Pro. So it has the same circuitry, you just shrunk it down. You can see the size difference. It's actually smaller than, uh, than an Uno board. But there's one problem, it has dual row headers on the bottom and it's not breadboard friendly. If you try to plug it into a breadboard, you can see here, you'll be shorting out, you'll be shorting out the dual row pins. So in this video we're going to have a look how we could prototype uh, with this, this board here with Zat Mega 2560 Pro. Okay, here's a technique that we could use for prototyping for the Mega 2560 Pro board. So I got some female dual row IGC headers, which you can see here, and some ribbon cable, and I would crimp two of them together. So there's two here and there's two here. So now we could plug in our board into the inner connectors, and it gives it some legs. You could actually put that down on your bench. So now we have connections on the second set of IGC female headers. So we could get our breadboard and we could apply it beside the board. Now we could pick whatever pin we want by plugging into the corresponding pin on the IDC header like that. Now we can build our circuitry on our breadboard and connect up to any pin on the pro board. Once we get our circuit up and running, then we could take the pro board, put it onto a Vero board for a more permanent solution. Okay, after we get our circuit up and running, it's working properly, we could mount the, the Mega 2560 pro board onto a Vero board for a more permanent solution. So it's a strip board, so we plug it in. But if you look at the back, you can see we have the same problem. You see the strips. We're shorting out, we're shorting out the dual rows. So what we could do, we could take an X-Acto knife or a razor knife, and we could cut a small channel in between here, and we could isolate these two rows, and we could do the same here. Run a channel down the middle, and we could isolate these two rows, and then we could we could actually put this on a Vero board. So I'll show you some examples of how I did that, of how I made a little channel on the back. A lot of people say it can't be done, but I do it a lot takes a little bit of practice. So I'll show you some examples on how we could create a little isolation channel between the dual row pins. Okay, here's an example of a dual row IDC header soldered onto a Vero board. You can see on the back, it's a dual row, and I've got a couple of them. It's my, my prototyping board. So all I do is cut a little isolation channel using an X-Acto knife, two cuts, and cut out the center, and then you got isolated. So now we can mount anything that has a dual row headers onto a Vero board. Okay, here's an example of a prototyping project that I'm working on using the 2560 Pro board. And you can see I have my Pro board mounted in the socket, which is soldered onto the Vero board. And I have a GPS module and a LoRa radio module. And on the back, you can see where I have made isolation cut my dual row and then I made another isolation channel here to isolate uh, this dual row from this dual row so I put one across here then for all my components this is my boring tool where I bore holes take out some copper to make it isolation channels so I have a GPS I have a lower radio module and if I if I type on the keyboard it's interactive I have flash forth running on the on the microcontroller so if I type any key you can hear the data being sent of the LoRa radio module. Now I can remove the LoRa radio module, and now I have another connector 
that I can plug in my Bluetooth module. So it's blinking, it's ready to be paired. So you can only have one in at a time, it's just the way the connectors are. So I could, I could take this out and plug back my lower radio module. And I could take out my GPS module and I could plug in on the second socket. I could plug in the FTDI module. So now I got a USB to serial connection into my microcontroller. So that's a way we could prototype using the Mega 2560 Pro board on Vero board. Now for enclosures, you could get all kinds of aluminum extruded enclosures, all different sizes. And you could cut your Vero board so it fits into the slots of the extruded aluminum box. Like you can see here, I cut this so it would fit into the slot. I just slide it in. Now if you have a board that doesn't fit into a, a, a slot, you could take the board and mount it on a piece of aluminum where the width will, will match the extruded aluminum box and then you can just slide that in. So that's a couple of ways that we could uh, use uh, enclosures and the Vero board to make it fit. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on how to prototype with the Mega 2560 Pro board. And I like this little board. It's small in size, has a small footprint. It has quartz crystals to clock the microcontroller and to clock the FTDI module. And it has two voltage regulators. We can see here is that one amp regulator for the 5 volt and one amp regulator for the 3.3 volt. As opposed to the this board, which only has 150 milliamp uh, voltage regulator for the 3.3 volt output. So it's a little bit better board. It's smaller. Fits on. Uh, you can fit it now on a Vero board. So now you can do your own prototyping using that Mega 2560 Pro board.